What's up guys and welcome back to the Concrete Edge right here on Deco Creek TV. My name's Jeff and on today's show we're going to be looking into the term solid content. I mean what does this term mean and how can it help you when deciding on what product to use in your daily routine so stay tuned and you're going to learn all about it. So have you guys ever been confused about this term solid content? I mean, or maybe you've even felt frustrated or overwhelmed in a conversation with a sales rep and you know, all they do is just keep throwing out product names and numbers like 70 uh, or 80, polyurethane, curlic sealer, 70 uh, or 85, poly 100% curlic sealer, So you get to this point where you're literally ready to just pull out your hair and just ask him, what does it all mean? <laughs> whoop de doo what does it all mean, Basil? So uh, while these names and numbers are important, um, the concept itself really doesn't have to be that difficult. In fact, it's a pretty easy theory to grasp if we start from the beginning. And you'll also sort of uh, start to realize that a lot of these uh, numbers that are in the product name itself all refer to that solid content, especially on the coating side of things. So really the first thing we need to understand is the difference between the solids and the carrying agent. Uh, so the word solid, I mean, is defined as a substance or an object that is solid rather than liquid. So, I mean, obviously that bucket of cured seal that you have at your shop or that kit of epoxy you just picked up for your next job, I mean, it is definitely liquid and not solid right now. And that's why we use this term solid content, just to describe the part of the liquid that will become solid uh, once it's been applied and had the proper time to harden. I mean, for example, if you're applying a coating that has a solid content of 85%, I mean only 85% of what you put on is gonna stay there as a solid film and 15% of that is just gonna evaporate. Now, if you're spraying an acrylic sealer on the other hand, this 25% solids, I mean literally 75% of whatever you sprayed on that concrete is gonna evaporate into thin air. And really, I mean, only a quarter of that is gonna stay behind as a film. And then, you know, we also have things that are called 100% solids or like this here, 100 epoxy. And again, generally when you see that term, 100 epoxy, that means it's 100% solids. And in that case, every last bit that you apply is gonna stay there and harden into a film. So what about that part that evaporates? I mean, what does that do and why do we need it? Now, this part of you know a sealer or a coating is gonna be referred to as the carrying agent or the carrier. So the solid content of the coatings and sealers is really just made up of a resin. And you know across the board, there's just a variety of different resins. Uh, they're all gonna to need to be spread out at a specific rate per square foot. Now, those different resins are also gonna uh, vary in workability, and some of them wouldn't even be possible to apply in their pure form because there's just no way to spread it out thin enough. Now, this is where the carrying agent comes into play. I mean, it's what allows you to work with the product and spread it out at the proper rate. Now, the main two carrying agents that you're gonna find in concrete sealers and coatings are gonna be water and solvents. And most of the odor that's associated with these products are from the carrier itself and not the resin. Now, this is why you'll generally see most of the low odor options are just gonna be water-based. Although things have changed a lot in the concrete coatings industry, and we do now have some really great uh, low odor solvent-based options to go along as well. Now, to wrap things all up here, uh, it's just important to understand the relationship between uh, solids and carrying agents, and it just helps paint a clearer picture of why a concrete sealer or coating might behave in a certain manner. I mean, things like dry time, breathability, sheen, workability, I mean, they're all affected by the amount of solids that's in that coating or sealer. Now, when it comes to acrylic sealers, I mean, things have changed a lot also in the last 15 to 20 years. I mean, when I first started in this, uh, you know, 25% solid sealers were kind of on the thinner end of things and you had 30% in the middle and you even had 35% solid sealers. And that has changed a lot. I mean, honestly, at this point, I mean, our most premium sealer, this guy right here, D1, is actually pretty thin. And you know, what is now a 25% solids, that's kind of considered on the thicker end of things. So things have changed there and thicker does not necessarily mean better, especially when it comes to acrylic resins. Now, when it comes to coatings, I mean, there's also a wide range of solid content. I mean, a lot of this has to do with water versus solvent base, but even just in the different sort of coatings uh, like epoxy and polyspartic, polyurethane, they're all going to vary in solid content. Now, some of this might be so that the product can perform in its intended use, or it might just be to give the installer more options. So the big thing is just make sure that you're comparing apples to apples before you make any final decisions for your next job. 
Now, if you guys are looking for more information on sealers and coatings for concrete, uh, please just uh, go check out the rest of our channel. We have quite a few other videos on these specific topics. Well, guys, that's pretty much it for today's show. Now, hopefully this video was helpful in your quest to gain more knowledge on concrete sealers and coatings. And I just want to say thank you guys so much for taking the time to watch these videos. I just can't even say how much we appreciate all the support that you guys show to the channel. I tune in every week, always hitting those little buttons down there, like, subscribe, share. Uh, please leave us a comment if you missed anything or if you have any questions about concrete uh, coatings or sealers or solid content or any of that stuff. Now, if you guys are already subscribed, uh, don't forget about that bell icon so you don't miss any of our upcoming videos. And honestly, it really does help our channel out. So from all of us here at DecoCrete TV, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.